part two of the Pakais Pass covers the eastern section from the 14th to the 26th kilometer. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch part one first, which contains the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important safety, tourism and historical information. From the 14th kilometer, the gradient flattens out as the road traverses a fairly long section over the central plateau. The town of Clan William is one of the ten oldest towns in the Western Cape and has history which goes back as far as 1660 when a team of Dutch explorers who were sent out by Jan van Riebeek first reached the Olifants River. When they entered the valley they saw a large number of elephant on the riverbank. Jan Dankart, the Dutch cadet in charge of the party, then named the river the Olifants Rivier. In 1732, the first farm in the Olifons River Valley was awarded to Pieter van Sel. The town was originally known as Jan Dusselsvlei after a Mr. Jan Dussel, who was a local pioneer and a botanist who lived in the Renosterbosch at Piketbergen. The river which flows along the northern side of Clan William is still today known as Jan Dussels Rivier. Dead ahead, the three distinct peaks of Charity, Hope and Faith can be clearly seen. The area around Clan William was first formed as part of the district of Stellenbosch but was declared a sub-district of its own in 1808 by the Earl of Caledon, then Governor of the Cape. On the 1st of January 1814, Caledon's successor, Sir John Craddock, renamed the area after his father-in-law, the Earl of Clan William. It cannot be said with certainty when the town originated but according to the available information, it must have been between 1804 and 1808. On the 12th of February 1820, two ships left Cork in Ireland with mainly Irish groups of immigrants and reached Simons Bay on the 30th of April. From there they sailed on to Sildana Bay. Although Lord Charles Somerset was planning to settle all the settlers in the Eastern Cape, the acting governor, Sir Rufin Duncan, decided to grant land in the vicinity of Clan William to the four groups of Irish settlers to keep them separate from the other settlers. After a short while in Clan William, the settlers soon realized that they'd not be able to make a living here. The arable land was not enough and the heat necessitated irrigation. Most of them were skilled laborers anyway and even the farmers amongst them didn't understand the South African conditions. They then requested a transfer and were taken to the Eastern Cape where they settled. In 1914 the beautiful Bulzuk Dam was built in the Olifons River about 15 miles north of Clan William to bring irrigation to Friedendal. In 1935 the Clan William Dam was completed and on August the 15th 1935 the dam overflowed for the first time. In June 1958, the National Road, now known as the N7 between Citrustal and Clan William, finally opened and in 1963 the one between Clan William and Clava also opened. Although initially very slow, the town gradually grew into a modern country town. In 1901 the town received municipal status with Mr. Charles Fryer, one of the descendants of the 1820 Irish settlers, being the first mayor. In 1964, the town received its own coat of arms, which symbolized the citrus industry and the Olifants River. The town had its own hydroelectric generator since 1938, which provided electricity for the most part of the year. In 1958, it was enlarged at a cost of 80,000 rand. Also, the town's water supply scheme was improved in the same year for an amount of 42,000 rand. This northern descent has three very sharp hairpin bends. Keep an eye out for the speed limits in the interests of your own safety. About 10 kilometers north of the end of the pass and just before the Wuppertal turnoff, you will see a grave site on the right hand side of the road marked as the Englishman's grave. This is a worthwhile point of interest and carries with it yet another tragic consequence of war. Like most of the passes built in the latter half of the 1800s, this one was also built using convict labor. From this point, the gradient eases right off as the final bend is reached, which is a wide left-hander adjacent to an attractive farmstead on the left. If you decide to take the turn off towards Wuppertal, please understand that it's a low-quality gravel road which will take you through the Bido Valley and eventually through to the Moravian hamlet of Wuppertal. Other passes in the Cedarburg which can be enjoyed, and most of which are gravel, include the Kromrafir, Eight Cake, 
Nevoots, Hoekseberg, Coburg, Yesselbank, Grootrevier and Blinkberg passes. Thank <laughs> you.